I was born and raised in a small town in southern Poland with a population of 11,000 people just north of Kraków. Most of my family members were local teachers. Math, physics, history and the curiosity to learn and to discover was instilled in me at a very young age. My, my family were my role models and they taught me that learning is key to achieving something in life and that something I wanted to dedicate my life to was science and discovery. But in my case, it was a path less traveled and I am probably one of a handful of scientists that my town has ever produced in its 900 year history. So, so after completing my secondary education in Krakow, I was very excited at the prospect of studying chemistry and biology at the university level and actually I came to the UK to visit a number of universities for open days and I absolutely fell in love with the University of Edinburgh and which is where I ended up going and the city of Edinburgh itself uh, reminded me a lot of Krakow and I felt very much at home there so in Edinburgh during my undergraduate studies and as a part of my final thesis project I became exposed to the field of science called protein crystallography and I was drawn to it because apart from sounding really cool it was a very visual field of science where you could discover how proteins look like in three dimensions, like in space. And it turns out that the shape of these proteins and their structure is actually important for how they function in our body. So, so I follow up on this newfound passion for proteins and, de and decided to do my entire research master's degree in London at UCL, studying proteins. And my project focused on mapping structural changes in human proteins upon infection by the virus, by the Kaposi sarcoma herpes virus, which turns out is able to hijack cellular programs responsible for survival and therefore avoid clearance by the immune system. And, and so we wanted to know how this process worked so that we could inform the discovery of new antiviral drugs against Kaposi sarcoma herpes virus. So, so then I decided, okay, this is it. I really love proteins and I want to dedicate my, my time to figuring out how they work. And this led me to Oxford where I studied for my PhD and where I was trying to understand how cellular structures called centrosomes assemble from hundreds and hundreds of individual proteins into a sophisticated molecular machine that drives rapid segregation of genetic material between cells that are in the process of growing and, and by cells growing I mean making new copies of themselves. This was a lot of work and a lot of fun too and, and I, I do miss Oxford a lot. I feel that me getting involved in TSC research was a progression that happened very naturally and it was purely out of my own curiosity of discovering how things work and, and as I just told you at Oxford I was studying how cells build those complex microscopic machines to ensure that during the process of growing there are no errors in the genetic material of those new cells and, and this sparked my fascination with how cells control the actual process of growth in other words whether a cell should grow and expand or not grow and try to maintain what it already exists in the body. Okay, so now, as you know, mutations and any aberrations in the process of growth can lead to disease states. This includes cancer and it includes TSC. And in order to fix these, we need to first discover how healthy cells regulate the process of growth to begin with. At the moment, we have a rather broad understanding of how cellular growth is controlled, but the details the details are missing and, and without these details it is near impossible to design new drugs or to develop new interventions for patients. So, so what motivates me as a TSC researcher is that my skill set to discover detailed information about proteins is actually useful here. And I feel that I can make a difference for patients with TSC which gives me a sense of purpose as a scientist. So I told you earlier that our cells have a sophisticated program that controls whether a cell should grow or stand by and maintain itself. Now, it turns out that this program of growth control is responsive to its environment. And by environment, I mean nutrients, growth factors, oxygen, stress, and many others, which basically means that the decision of whether 
a cell should grow or not grow is rational and based on data that the cell collects about its surroundings. And it turns out that the cell has specialized antennas to do that job in the form of proteins. They can sense conditions in the environment and then relay that information to another decision-making protein, which we call mTOR. Now, the mTOR protein collects and integrates all that information and they either orders the cell to build cellular mass and grow when, when there's a lot of food around, or it makes the cell recycle whatever is available and not grow when, the, when there is not much food. Now, what happens in patients with TSC is that the passage of information between the environmental sensors and mTOR is faulty. And this results in mTOR thinking that there is a lot of food and growth factors around, while in fact there might be none. And that's a problem because those cells will simply keep growing out of control because mTOR will tell them so. And, and I don't need to tell you how devastating consequences that kind of uncontrolled growth can have on patients' bodies. So in order to treat TSC, we need to figure out how to fix that communication between mTOR and sensors. The tricky part is that we actually don't know how that communication works to begin with. This is where I come in as a protein chemist. First, I am working towards discovering the details of how mTOR protein receives the information from sensors. And I do this by visualizing proteins in three dimensions through either coercing them to form crystals and then irradiating them with powerful x-rays inside of gigantic particle accelerators, or alternatively, I capture them frozen in ice using powerful electron microscopes that are able to image them the fine details of those protein structures in, in three dimensions. Now, with that knowledge in hand, I work with chemists, biologists, and computer scientists to develop novel experimental drugs for TSC patients. Our goal is to create a drug that halts the growth of cells which have developed communication errors between the environmental sensors and mTOR. Now, and, and importantly, we want to develop a drug that is safer and more potent than the current therapies and that can be only achieved by first knowing how mTOR works and how it communicates with those sensors. I am a, I am a certified ocean yacht master and I have been sailing since the age of 10. I learned how to race on small dinghy boats and then while at university I advanced to racing large 50 feet yachts just off the coast of Edinburgh. I also regularly organize sailing expeditions with varying levels of difficulty on the waters of the Mediterranean, Baltic, North Seas or even recently the many islands of the, of the Atlantic Ocean. I started really early and already at the age of 18 I was leading a sailing expedition that circumnavigated Zealand and Fun, which, which are the, some of the largest Danish islands where Copenhagen is located. I also sailed from Poland to Edinburgh, all the way, and, and then we crossed the North Sea all the way to Norway. It was a, it was a real adventure. Beyond sailing, I am, uh, I am super passionate about films and filmmaking. Uh, growing up, I directed a number of short and full feature films, some of which were displayed in local cinemas in Krakow. In fact, for one of the short films that we produced in Scotland, we were nominated for a BAFTA New Talent Award. And the main actor that we worked with on that project was Gold Leader from the original Star Wars. So that was a lot of fun. Um, also, before crossing the Atlantic to work at MIT, uh, I was a fully active handball player. I started off my handball adventure as a goalkeeper for junior teams back in Poland and then transitioned to university teams in the UK. My biggest achievement is winning the UK National Championship in University Handball with Oxford, actually for two years in a row, and, uh, and of course beating Cambridge in that process. I remember there was a short period of time when my studies were not going so well, but my filmmaking was off the charts. And I was actually seriously considering dropping everything and moving to Los Angeles in pursuit of a proper filmmaking career. So yeah, if, um, if I wasn't a scientist, I would be making movies.
I am, I am a huge advocate for so-called fundamental or basic research, which is understanding of how things work. And there are two things that I hope we can achieve in the years to come by working together as a TSD field. First uh, is a precise understanding of how mutations in TSC patients affect activity of the enteroprotein. Such full understanding is necessary to begin thinking about developing safe therapeutics for patients. This is, this is one of the projects that I'm actually currently building and, and I hope I will be able to tell you more about it in a few years time. And second, I would love to see better understanding of what TSC genes are doing beyond their communication with mTOR. And the reason I say that is because patients with TSC experience many symptoms that cannot be simply explained by faulty growth control alone. And I would love to see more researchers trying to figure out what TSC genes are doing beyond communicating with mTOR. It's, it's not easy. So actually, in 2022, very soon, I will be opening my own laboratory at Stanford University in California as an assistant professor. And um, this could not have happened without the generous support of the Tuberous Sclerosis Association. And I am forever thankful for the trust you have given me to carry out this project and to develop it into, into something bigger. I am very excited for this new adventure and my laboratory will continue the detailed protein work on TSC that started here at MIT. We will be driving the fundamental discovery of how mTOR and how TSC proteins work together and then advancing that knowledge to develop novel therapeutics for patients with cellular growth disorders and that includes TSC and includes cancer. Now, I am currently building my team so, so if you know of any ambitious young people who would like to join our efforts, please tell them to get in touch, and, um, and I hope that I can also do some sailing on the Pacific. I would like to say one thing to patients, caregivers, donors, and the entire TSC community. You have a fearless ally in us scientists. We are a team of dedicated and passionate people whom you might actually never meet in real life because we are in the lab all the time. We are working hard behind the scenes trying to materialize those treatment ideas into a reality. And we realize that time is precious, which is why we strongly believe that by innovating, by approaching the same problem from different angles, we have a better chance at succeeding at finding the cure. So thank you for supporting basic fundamental research and discovery on tuberous sclerosis complex. Thank you.